Hi LEGO fans! It's not very often that LEGO releases a set cool enough to make me get out of bed at 4.45am on Black Friday. But today I made an exception and I was one of the few brave souls standing outside the LEGO store at quarter to six this morning. This is my reward and today I'm going to unbox, speed build and review Set number 70922, the awesome Joker Manor. It's perhaps difficult to see on camera, but this is one big and heavy box of Lego. The box is the same size box I used for the Disney Castle and Ninjago City, but the part count on this set is quite a lot lower. Ninjago City had almost 5,000 elements, whereas this has 3,444. But I expect we're going to be seeing larger elements in this set, including the brand new roller coaster pieces. This is a Lego store exclusive, so you can only buy it at your local Lego store or online at shop.lego.com. If you buy this set this weekend, you are going to get some free stuff. I got one of these, a Lego tote bag. Thanks for that, Lego. I also got the super awesome Disco Batman and Tears of Batman poly bag. I have reviewed that before, so check out the link on screen now. They also gave me this really cool Christmas tree decoration and the Christmas 2017 seasonal giveaway, the Nutcracker. I have reviewed that before, so be sure to check out the link on screen to see my review. Also worth noting, the Thanksgiving seasonal special is now half price at the Lego store. This was $10 and it's down to $5 now that Thanksgiving is over. But you don't want to see all that stuff. This set is based on a scene in the Batman movie where the Joker takes over Wayne Manor and turns it into a ginormous funhouse. It also comes with a great selection of minifigures, including some exclusives. We've got Batman, Nightwing, Alfred Pennyworth dressed in the classic Batsuit, Barbara Gordon, the Joker, the Magnificent Harley Quinn, Disco Batman, Disco Robin, Disco Batgirl, and Disco the Joker. Before we open up the box, let's flip it over so we can take a look at the back of the Joker Manor. As you can see, the inside of Wayne Manor has also been extensively renovated by the Joker. There are way too many cool details in this set to show you just from the box art alone, but we will cover all of these in the set review later. A couple of things I wanted to point out are the awesome Joker's head, which contains a slide. Of course, you can't miss the roller coaster, which looks super awesome. And we've got some features inside, including Batman's microwave and the Joker's hall of mirrors. We've also got Batman's cinema room, complete with romantic DVD and a large pair of boxing gloves. One thing I'm really not looking forward to is the stickering in this set. It looks like there are a lot of details on stickers. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how big the sticker sheet is. Cool, so I've got many hours of building to do. Let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. That took some serious unboxing, but here's everything that came inside the box. We've got 22 numbered bags of Lego, another two bags of special Lego elements that are not numbered, the instruction manual, which is about an inch thick, and two sticker sheets, which aren't quite as bad as I thought they might be. I've got a team of builders standing by. We're going to go ahead and put this together over the next few hours, and we're going to film it and roll it up into a really quick speed build for you.
And here's the completed build. Build time was six hours and 45 minutes and there was plenty of Lego for everybody in the family to have a go. This was great fun to put together and the end result is a super impressive Lego build. It's bright, it's colorful, there are loads of new elements in there and we've got 10 great minifigures. There's so much to see here, so I'm gonna focus on the front first. Then we'll spin the Joker Manor around and take a look at all the cool rooms inside. And of course we'll demo the roller coaster. One of the things that makes this model so visually appealing is the range of colours. The designers had access to so many different colours of Lego elements and I guess we owe some of that to Lego Friends which makes great use of pastel shades, lots of greens and pinks and purples. Just in the build for the entrance alone we've got three different shades of green. And we've also got these very cool flexible yellow spikes. On either side of the main entrance we've got these buildable 3D bombs which are very cool. I really like the way they've used the orange plant element at the top there to represent the flaming fuse. Above the door we've got a pair of boxing gloves on extendable arms. Those can be operated using a dial at the back of the Joker Mansion. With the boxing gloves fully extended you can see this pair of statues on either side of the main tower. The last time I remember seeing that element used is in the Lego board games range. Moving up the building, you can't miss this amazing Joker sign. There are some stickered pieces in here for the word the and the Joker's face, but everything else you see here is Lego elements. The sign is also on a pivot so you can rock it from side to side. The design work here and the attention to detail is absolutely amazing. If you've seen the Batman movie, you may remember there was a disco happening inside the Joker Manor. And it's so cool that we've got all these different coloured windows on either side of the Joker's Manor to represent the disco lights flashing. The Joker's personality is stamped all over this build, and not least with these large ha-ha signs on the side. This also gives us a chance to have a look at how the roller coaster track is attached to the side of the building. And while it looks like it might be quite fragile, the roller coaster track is actually really firmly attached to the building. It also helps that the track elements themselves are very rigid and add to the structural stability of the roller coaster. Looking at all of the fun remodeling that the Joker's done to Wayne Manor, you can still actually see all of the original architecture. And there's a lot of very detailed building work in the roof line. Another great example of the attention to detail in the build are these windows. And immediately below the window, you can see one of the support structures for the roller coaster track coming out of the front of the building. At the very top of the Joker Manor, we've got this very cool all-seeing eye. This can rotate through 360 degrees and we've got a lever on the back there so the eye can look up and down. If you thought the outside of the Joker Manor looked very cool, the interior takes it to a whole new level. While the Joker has definitely made his mark here, there's still plenty of original features from inside Wayne Manor. This is not one of those original features, but provides a way for our minifigures to get aboard the roller coaster. The roller coaster has three different speed settings. Ha! Ha ha! And boah ha ha ha! The entrance hall to Wayne Manor has been converted into this awesome hall of mirrors. These are stickered parts, so the effect is not perfect, but you can see that the Joker is being effectively distorted by the mirror. In total, and including the two mirrors on the side, we have four mirrors in the Hall of Mirrors. Above the Hall of Mirrors, we've got this dial which works the boxing gloves on the front of the Joker Manor. If we remove that wheel, you can see there is a considerable amount of gearing in the mechanism for the boxing gloves. In fact, I think it would be fair to say that the boxing gloves are among the most complicated parts of the build to complete. Above the entrance hall is this very large Joker's head, which is very cool. No stickered pieces here, this is all Lego elements. And you might notice that his mouth looks suspiciously like a slide. That would be for good reason. Yes, there is a small room above the Joker's head with disco floor and a trapdoor. We've got some disco effect lights with these two arrows and this BAM sign. And we've got boxes containing evil plans and jokes. Although on taking a closer look, the box marked jokes does seem to contain Bruce Wayne's precious artwork. There's a picture of him. And I'm guessing that's a picture of him with mom and dad. On the ground floor, we've got a music room complete with very impressive fire, a grand piano, and what looks like a bust of Beethoven. I'm not usually a fan of stickering, but the sticker behind the fireplace combined with the 3D transparent orange elements is a very effective result. The grand piano is one of my favorite mini builds from the set. I think it shows a great amount of attention to detail, and I really like the new track score that Batman was working on. Immediately above the music room is a picture gallery, and you can see that the Joker has replaced Bruce Wayne's artwork with artwork of himself. In fact, those are the same pictures with the Joker substituted. 
Next door we've got Bruce Wayne's cinema room, complete with flat screen TV, romantic DVD and his bowl of ice cream. In fact, that wasn't a flat screen TV at all, it was a projection screen. We've actually got the projector on the wall above Batman's chair. And that romantic DVD is a very nice printed piece which is bound to be exclusive to this set. Finally, for this wing of the manor, we've got some attic space complete with bats in the belfry. On the lower floor of the other wing, we've got Bruce Wayne's kitchen. We've got an area for preparing food and more importantly, slicing lemons to go with Batman's lobster thermidor. Speaking of lobster thermidor, we've got one in the microwave cooking right now. The microwave is a great little build and I really like the fact that we get one of those lobster elements. We've got another gallery on this side, this time we've got Batman's music memorabilia. There's a picture of Batman performing with somebody who looks like a rapper. We've also got a very nicely printed presentation disc and a printed guitar. Batman is very serious about his music and has his own recording studio in the manor. It comes complete with mixing desk, speakers and a microphone. As you'd expect to find in a billionaire playboy's lavish manor house, there is a very well appointed bathroom. We've got gold fixtures and a fountain to fill the bathtub. The detailing on the wall is a large stickered piece, but I like the way it integrates and literally flows into the build. We've got some more attic space filled with bat merch and a box from Wild Style. That's a great nod to the Lego movie, I really like that. Those boxes are kept company by our generic Lego rat. And finally, we've got another turret inhabited by a bat. Just before we demo the roller coaster, let's take a look at those three roller coaster cars. These are brand new for 2018, so we've never seen these in a Lego set before. All three of the cars are based on the same Lego element. We've got this large piece here which is a molded plastic car. We've got wheels in the bottom which spin quite freely. Those are great, those just snap in. And then we've got a limited number of studs on top for decoration. In this case here, we've got some, uh, some harness work. Uh, we've got some uh, things on the side here to keep the characters in. And then for the front car, we've got this fabulous smile. Looks a little bit like Mick Jagger. This is one of the pieces of roller coaster track, although they come in a number of different variations. This track is very sturdy, uh, it does have some flexibility to it, but it's structurally very sound. Uh, we've got studs at the bottom there and negative studs here so that we can snap the track onto the supports. And then when we want to join two pieces of track together, we have these black tiles here, which will join them together quite nicely. The cars attached to the track very easily, they just sit on it like that and there's a little bit of a lip here which helps to keep the car on the track but doesn't really stop you taking it on and off easily. And the, uh, the track runs very very smoothly with the wheels on the car, so uh, yeah, I mean as you can see there it just falls straight off. So that's the car, that's the track, let's cut to the chase and demo the roller coaster. The roller coaster train is in the station, all we need now are some minifigures to ride. And there we go! The minifigures sit really nicely inside the cars, they're very secure, and it's a nice bonus that the minifigures can actually hold on to the safety rail. One of the negatives about the roller coaster is that there's no mechanism to help the car climb the track, so we do have to assist the roller coaster train manually. Are you ready to see it go? As you can see, the train couldn't make it all the way around under its own steam. The highest point of the track is on the other side, so let's try launching the train from there. The roller coaster is great fun, it's not difficult to put together and it's very smooth, we just need somebody to figure out how to mechanise it. I don't think that'll take long somehow. It did occur to me that it would be great fun to mount a GoPro on the roller coaster train, but unfortunately I don't own a GoPro. So when you see somebody else doing it, you know you heard it here first. Before we look at the minifigures, let's take one last ride. Not only do we have a great playset, we've also got a great collection of minifigures, including some exclusives. So let's grab a look at each one of these in turn. This is Batman, and as far as I can tell, he is exactly the same minifigure we get in pretty much every Batman movie set. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. We'll take a quick look at his face, which has the dual facial expression. Uh, we've got that very nice cowl there, and he comes with the premium very soft cape. He's also got his utility belt and a batarang. A uh, little bit of printing on the back of the torso for definition and on the front we've got the bat symbol and some impressive abs. That's Batman. 
This is Robin dressed as his alter ego, Batwing. And this is a super cool minifigure. I really like this. Uh, we've got this large shoulder piece here which has two wings attached to it. We've got his cowl here with the signature glasses on the outside. Uh, we've got a round piece here which is a printed piece of the bat symbol. We've got one of these utility belts. I'm just going to take this off so we can have a look at the face underneath. That's Robin's normal face and we've got another expression which you can't quite see on the back. Let me just take off these wings so we can get down to his printing and uh, I'm going to also take off that cape. So let's put that back on. And we've got some nice detailed printing on the front there, another bat logo. And on the back, we've got a little bit of metallic printing for the zipper on the back of his bat wing suit, which is very cool. I just want to go back to this cape, which is very long and again, feels nice and soft, very premium. And that is our very impressive and I believe exclusive bat wing minifigure. I almost forgot to mention, bat wing comes with a hairdryer for some reason. This is Alfred the Butler, and he's dressed in the classic 1960s bat suit, which is truly awesome. So let's start off with those legs. These are dual molded with printing on the front. Then we get the torso piece, which has printing, including the bat symbol, and a little bit of a belly there for Alfred. Uh, he's got his utility belt, of course, and a little bit of printing around the neckline. He's also got one of these nice, very smooth capes. And Alfred has a quite unique hair piece. He's got uh, a bold head with gray hair around the edges and that just popped off. Oh, <laughs> we don't take his legs off. I don't think there's an expression on the back. No, there wouldn't be because there's nothing to hide it. And that is a very nice Alfred in the classic bat suit. This is Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's daughter. And I'm pretty sure we've seen her before in one of the other Batman movie sets. Uh, she is very nicely printed with this vest. Uh, she's got a gun here. I think there's a holster. Yeah, there's a, a shoulder holster there. She's got a badge down printed on the pants. Uh, if we flip it over, she's also got some printing on the back there with nice metallic printing for the buckle on the back of the vest. The hairpiece is particularly nice. I love red hair on Lego minifigures, and this is no exception. I really like the uh, the gold band in the hair as well. And if we pop that hair off, you can see we've actually got a very mean and determined expression on the back. So that is a very cool Barbara Gordon minifigure. This is a Joker. This is the first of two Jokers in this set, and he is one of my favorite minifigures. Uh, he has these dual molded arms with printing on there for the playing card symbols, which is very nice. He's wearing a vest with lots of very nice printed detail on there and some metallic detailing going down onto the pants. If we flip him over, you can also see he's got some detailing on the back there, some very good printing, I must say. Um, he has his very mean smiley expression and this great shock of green hair. If we flip him over, you can see he's got a bigger smile on the back there. So the Joker always brings a smile to my face and it's great to get him in this set. This is Harley Quinn. She's another great minifigure. I really like that hair piece with the red and black intermingled hair. That is so cool. And uh, she's got these uh, dual colored legs with printing on the front there. And she even comes with a set of roller skates, which is very nice. And those are color coordinated with the legs. And uh, that is just so cool. Now the printing on the front of her Torso here is advertising Smilex, which is the brand the Joker uses for any of his poison based products. We've also got some printing on the arms there with the skulls, which is very nice. And um, are those skulls? Yeah, I think they yeah, I think they might be. Um, we've also got some uh, some diamonds down the other side. Let's take a look at Harley Quinn's face. That is very, very nice. And oh yeah, slightly more bemused expression on the back. Speaking to the back, let's take a look at that printing. Uh, we have a bowling ball disguised as a bomb and that's knocking over some pins, which is very nice. And finally, she has her weapon of choice here, which is the, uh, I was gonna say a baseball bat, looks more like a rounders bat to me, uh, but that's very nice in this red and white colorway with the white diamond printing. And that is the amazing Harley Quinn. Finally, we get on to our disco minifigures and these are super awesome. So this is Disco Robin. And as you can see straight away, he's got loads of gold detailing on the front there. We've also got these dual molded and printed legs, which are very, very nice. I just love all of this gold metallic work. We've got a white cape there with a metallic gold interior, which is super awesome. And some more gold detailing on the back and some sparkly silver printing as well. When it comes to his face, I think that's a standard 
Robin expression. Yes, it is. I think that's the same one we got on the um, the Batwing minifigure earlier. But that is our Disco Robin. No Disco Robin would be complete without his Disco Batman. And here is Disco Batman. He's also got some fantastic metallic printing on the front there. You can see we've got some metallic silver and metallic gold. I think the pants themselves are actually plain. And on the back there, we've got some more metallic silver printing. And he's got this same gold lined cape. Now, really unusual for Batman, if I lift off his cowl, I don't think I've ever seen a Batman minifigure smile. I might be wrong, but uh, that is super cool. And we've got another smile on the back there. I also noticed we've got some metallic printing on the headband there, which shows through the cowl. So it gives Batman kind of gleaming eyes, which really fits with the smile. So that, that is a super awesome minifigure. Really pleased to get that. That is Disco Batman. Another amazing Disco minifigure. This is Disco the Joker. And again, he's got lots of metallic printing on the front there. And I really like this large gold J that he's wearing around his neck. That is so cool. He's also got some metallic printing down onto the pants there. And if we turn him over, you can see he's got this large gold J on the back there. And these amazing white coattails, which are super awesome. Um, around his neck, he's got this kind of ermine fur collar, which is very rapper-esque. And his face is great. Look at those sunglasses. Those are awesome. Uh, turn him over again. We've got the uh, the more smiley expression, but I really like those cold sunglasses. They are so cool. And that is Disco the Joker. And finally, we've got Disco Batgirl, aka Barbara Gordon. This is another two of the force of minifigure design. I really like the dual molded legs here, particularly because we've got gold at the bottom. I don't know if I've ever seen that on a minifigure. Uh, she's got matching gold gloves here. We've got beautiful arm printing. Loads of metallics on the front, which look awesome. We've also got this white utility belt. And then we've got the cowl there. We take the face off. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's actually a white head with printing on there. Now, that does actually seem to have come out quite crisp. I've actually seen recently with LEGO minifigures where they've tried to print on black, uh, print faces onto black, and that really doesn't work. Um, she's also got this beautiful gold cape, and that is awesome. Uh, also some more printing on the back there. Yeah, more gold metallic printing. That is Disco, I was gonna say Disco Barbara Gordon, but it is Disco Batgirl. So wrapping up my thoughts on the Joker Manor, I think it's an awesome playset. I really like this. I'm so pleased that I got this. It's got some great minifigures and the playset itself is so cool. The other thing I really like about it is how the designers have thought about how you're going to display it. It's a large playset, but it's not sprawling. And with all the Technic Lego framework at the base of the model, it's sturdy so you can pick this thing up and carry it around. So not only does it look very cool, you can also play with it and it's not going to fall apart which is so important for LEGO models. So in conclusion, this is a very expensive set. It's probably gonna be one that adult fans of LEGO go out and buy. But if you are very lucky and you do manage to get your hands on this, I think you'll be very pleased with it. So that was set number 70922, the fantastic Joker Manor. I can't tell you how much fun I had building this set and reviewing it. If you enjoyed this unboxing, speed build and review video, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I release two new LEGO review videos every single week, so you'll always find something new or something old to discover on my channel. Thanks for checking out today's review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.